possession of mundane things. And finally, the praise of men. When this happens, what is the consequence? What is the consequence? You find yourself trivializing the word of God and finally interpreting the Bible to suit your purpose. You find yourself quenching the spirit of the Lord. You find yourself in spiritual dullness. And then there'll be lukewarmness and carefree attitude to spiritual matter. Distraction and discouragement to unbelievers and to babes in Christ you will be. You'll be a source of discouragement to people. This, this distraction to people. Unbelievers will be saying, uh, is that not who the four Christians, is that not who the four Christians attend? They will not give their life to Christ and their blood will be on you. And babes in Christ also, you made them to fall. Then there will be spiritual weakness and exposure to demonic attack, demonic oppression, and demonic possession. I'm trying to be fast now because of time. Get the message later and then get your notes. Number seven, there will be disfellowship. That's consequences of the certain sin. Disfellowship. Don't you see people that are backsliding on their own because they cannot meet up with the environment of holiness anymore. They will relocate to another church. And then they will now begin to look for excuses. And this person talked to me like that. And when my mother died, they didn't do this. When my father died, they didn't do that. Brother, sister, the truth is you are backslidden. Repent of it and return back unto the Lord and they will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. And then your prayer life is affected. I'm not talking about the religious prayer that people are praying. I'm talking about personal, intimate relationship with the Lord. With the Lord. And then there'll be an unanswered prayer. Remember, Saul, the first king of Israel, when he went into the sin, God stopped listening to him. I cried, he prayed, God wouldn't answer. The book of the Psalm 66, verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord help me, the Lord will not hear me. Unanswered prayer. And that's what is happening to you. Sisters, pay attention. I've been saying this lately because I know a lot of you here in Georgia, a lot of you there in Washington, a lot of you over there in North Carolina, a lot of you there at New York and all over. You have this prayer meeting here, prayer meeting here, prayer meeting here. Something is wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with prayer, but the way you are going about this, something is wrong with you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59. Look at verses 1 and 2. It says, The hands of the Lord is not shut, that he cannot deliver. Neither his ears too heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquity has separated between you and him. And I know some of you, you fast and you do everything. Go and read Isaiah chapter 58. There the Bible says that nobody has appointed you all those fasts you are doing. You can't twist the, the hand of the law. You can't force the law. You know, recently, a man called me, and I hope you are paying attention. He's not a member of the church. The wife was coming to our church. And the man was furious, was angry, and uh, said, Pastor, please tell your pastor to leave my wife alone. And said, your pastor and my wife, uh, they're planning this program. I, I, I knew nothing about it. They're doing that. I knew nothing about it. And then he said, your pastor said they were going to pray and they took my wife to an hotel. Deep Alive Bible Church. And this pastor, I couldn't believe that. 
And I said, man, you are just telling me, oh, sorry, uh, I will get back to you. And I called the pastor. And I said, the husband of this particular woman called. And of course, I got another pastor there. And I said, this is what the man said. He said, no, pastor, I didn't take the wife to the hotel. We rented Airbnb. I said, what? Airbnb. I said, every Sunday, before service, and you know, in case you don't know, we did one hour solid prayer this morning before the service, right? That's what we do in Washington, every blessed Sunday. I said, every Sunday, we pray one hour before service. After the message, we pray. I said every day, Monday to Sunday, we pray one hour every day. I said before Bible study, we spend time praying. Revival service, we spend time praying. I said every month, we have fasting and prayer. I said every month, we have night vigil until Corona now came. I said, all these are different from your personal prayer time, your devotion. I said, what other prayer are you looking for? That you have to go and camp with somebody's wife in Airbnb. This is not of the Lord. Uh, he said, hey, Pastor, uh, it was, it's not me alone. Well, obviously, he got uh, one your brother who is young in the faith and one other lady who knows what goes on in the middle of the night? He said, no, this is not the day for love I know. Sister, what are you looking for? If you are not careful, somebody now will take you to the water side and then they want, they want to pray for you and make it to watch you so that, so that uh, you can be delivered. What are you looking for? If you really give your life to Christ Jesus, you will understand that the veil on the curtain is rent in pieces. That we might have direct access to the God of heaven himself. And that you need no pastor, pay attention here. You need no overseer. You need no body to help you attain to God. Who is that pastor going to pray to? Is it not God? Why then are you looking for a prophet anywhere? You've been in the faith, you've been in the law. And then you get this one, you get that one, you get that one. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. The Lord will help you. This is the Palai Bible Church. Where we believe in God. We believe in the power of prayer. Amen. We believe in holiness and righteousness. The Bible says, flee from every appearance of evil. You know, I heard of a particular lady, Tipalai, again, that was sending money to them in Africa to pay for her. I heard of another one. A lot of things are happening. And I hope you are all listening to me. That you will be going after this prophet and after that prophet. And then I got to know of it and I said, what is wrong? And he said, don't people also from other churches come to pass you for prayer? I knew this person is gone. I knew this person is gone. I knew this person is gone. And you know, when you have something that you don't value, it doesn't benefit, it doesn't profit you. Things will turn around. I said things will turn around. And come to think of it, if this pastor you believed in pray, had nothing happened. And then you go to another pastor, nothing happened. And then you go to another sister, Nothing happened. Don't you know something is wrong? Don't you know that everyone is closed against you? Don't you understand that was exactly the same way that Saul did? Seeking and seeking and nothing. Don't you think it is time for you to go on your knee, fall on your face and say, Lord, deliver me. It doesn't matter. I told somebody, I said, you can go to pastor, go to prophet, go to priest, go to the Pope. I said until heaven open, your prayer will not be answered. 
and I'm telling you, it doesn't used to be like that. And some of you, I don't want to mention the name of any church. And you know this church, uh, they do this deliverance, they do that, and you are rushing there. I am here, I can tell you there are people from that church that are coming back, telling us that there is no life of holiness and happiness. That they need the word of God. I pray, if you need anything other than the word of God, you have a problem. Serious problem. Because at the end of the day, there is no man born of woman that is not that does not have problem. Am I communicating? But when you just wait on God, at the appointed time, He will bring lasting solution and will deliver you completely in Jesus' name. So there will be an answer prayer. And then there'll be end of life sorrow and sadness. At the end of it, you regret. That will not be your portion. And then you realize that you are incorrigible. All this I'm saying, there is somebody right here now that say, I don't care what they say. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. It's a spirit that is already working in you. Incorrigibility, stubbornness, self-will. That's the spirit. And it's already operating inside of you. That even when the correction is coming, you are struggling it all. And then there'll be deficiency of inner peace. You lack inner peace. Then at some point in your life, you begin to have self-condemnation and then self-defense. You'll be defending everything you do. I told you earlier on that you'll be accusing other people for your woes and your sorrow. That's when you'll understand your mother-in-law is a witch. Your father-in-law is a wizard. Your pastor is this. Your other member is that. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. That's everything taking you back to Egypt. Will, you'll be delivered from there. At the end of the day, there will be eternal damnation and final separation from God. Is there any hope? Yes, there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Victory over besetting sin through inestimable grace. Victory over besetting sin through inestimable grace. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the glory that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand on the plough and looking back his feet for the kingdom of God. You need to live a life of victory on daily basis, life of faith, trust and confidence in the Word of God, complete and total obedience to the Word of God without any reservation. Jude 1.3 Beloved, when I gave all diligence, all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort to that you should honestly contend, strive, fight for the faith which was once delivered unto the same. If you must have this victory, you must repent. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, for the times of repression shall come. From the presence of the Lord. To have this victory, you must fight. Somebody say fight. Somebody say fight. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto that thou also art been uh, sorry. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto 
thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And the second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 tells us from verse 19 now. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone, everyone, youth, everyone, children, everyone, missus, everyone, mister, everyone, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ, pastor, everyone, Mr. Walker, Mrs. Walker in the church, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Verse 26, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet, qualified for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Every good work. The Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So then, the Lord is calling you and telling you it is possible. When you live this victorious life, what then is going to happen? Point three, vitality of saints and their translation to eternal glory. Vitality of saints and their translation to eternal glory. God will give you the grace to live an exemplary life. He says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Unto all men. Teaching us that deny what? Ungodliness and worldly loss. We are supposed to live out soberly righteously in this present world. I pray the Lord God of heaven will give us the grace to live that life in Jesus' name. I need a better one. Amen. There will be purity of heart with its attending blessing. Purity of heart. Purity of heart. The power of an extraordinary life will be given unto you. Amen. Find out in Romans chapter 3, verse 18. And then the courage of an overcomer will be your possession. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, verse 1, it says, The wicked fled when no man pursued, but the righteous as bold as lion. Amen. And then there will be victory over the devil, over the demon, and over the. Look up here, look up here, everybody. All these people looking for prayer here, looking for prayer here, looking for prayer here. Why do you think they're going up and down? The devil is pursuing them. The demon is after them. And they are afraid of dying. Am I not right? The devil will not leave my head alone. The devil will not leave my leg alone. The devil is inside my stomach. I have a good news for you. There is nobody, no devil inside of me. I said there is no devil inside of me. There is no demon inside of me. So I don't need to be running here to skelter anyway. Amen? You know the reason why? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen? That is the vitality of the saint. The power. As a matter of fact, pay attention. If you are this saint you are talking about, by the grace of God, this power you have, you are now to be delivering people that are still in bondage. But you say you are in the Lord, and you are the one asking for deliverance. Something is wrong with you. And this is the era, the time of liberation. Somebody will be free. I said somebody will be free. In the name of Jesus. I told them in Washington, D.C., I'm going to tell you here, you all hear me. I was just about two years old in the faith, in the Lord, genuinely born again. 
when I was confronted with an issue. Somebody died, a family member of mine. I came back home from Bible study or whether revival service, I don't remember now. It's been a long time. 38 years ago. And then this person was laid there. Two years old in the faith. It was in the night. No 911 to call. No pastor nearby. The only person I could call upon was God. And I stood while the person was on the bed. And I called upon the name of the Lord. For how long I prayed, I don't remember. But she came back to life. A, a babe in Christ. A babe in Christ. A newborn babe in Christ can call on that God and he can answer. You have been in the faith for 10 years, for 30 years. What is wrong? What are you looking for? Something will change. You have the power. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. That is the vitality of the saints. You have the victory. You have a quick answer to prayer. Quick answer to prayer. Answer to prayer. Uh, thank God we're here in Cobb and the pastor here uh, used to be my member those days. Uh, used to be whether I know he was he, at the point he was in the electronics department at that time was in the ush department. But they were married and there was no child. The wife always had a miscarriage. And this particular time, and he's here hearing me today. I got to his house. And then I, I just opened the Bible from the book of Kings. And I said, from this day, there will be no more bitterness here. Two minutes prayer is here. I drove more than one hour to go to his house. I just read from the place where Elijah said, bring me a goose and then a salt water. And then I just read the place and then I prayed. And then I got up to leave. And he said, Pastor, where are you going? You just came. I said, yes, I just came. Not quite two minutes of prayer, the Lord did it. Now they have their children. What is your problem? The Lord is in his holy tabernacle. Let every spirit bow. If you really believe in this God, you really believe in this God. Was it last month or so, somebody died? And then we're preparing for the funeral. I'm telling you, I changed from when I was a baby in the Lord. And I'm telling you that even now, even now, the Lord is still working. He's still working. The vitality of the same. The power of a true believer. If you will believe in me, God will work wonders in your life. And then we, we got to that place, the funeral home. And then as I was talking with the director, and then the director, she said, Lady, Don and Son's funeral, mention it the name so you can check it out. And she told me, Pastor, the last time we met, you prayed for my daughter who had no child. And now I can tell you, she has a baby boy. This is an American, not African, not a deeper life. We only met. And then the daughter said, I have this issue. Be married for years. This is a problem. And I said, with God, all things are possible. Let us pray. Simple prayer. Immediate answer. And that's why I say, you have quick answer to prayer. Isaiah 64 verse 20, 65 verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they come, I will answer. I need a better one. And while they are yet speaking, somebody, I will hear. The Lord will hear you. The Lord will hear you. Your problem is you don't believe yourself. You don't believe the word of God. You only believe in man. You believe in their power. 
to believe in their power. And uh, if that person, oh my goodness, I have to round up. I have to round up. But I want to say that be careful of where you go. Be careful. Be careful. Pastor Benga is here years back. A man, a minister from another church. He went for prayer where they lay hands upon him. And the person lay hands on him, bring force and take miracle by evil spirit and power. Now, this one is a Christian and will be a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Lay hands upon him and downloaded the spirit of Python. Do you remember? Spirit of Python. He went from fry pan inside fire. He came for us for prayer. As we were praying, he was committing light blood. Re blood. Re blood. I'm telling you, you know, you may not believe us, but we know we have the power of God. You may not believe yourself. I know you have the power of God. But what, when you don't know who you are, you won't know what you have. 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 We're here in, uh, in Georgia, years back. I shared this with them and then home fellowship. This is Cobb County, here in Cobb. Here in Cobb. Where is uh, Brother Emily and the wife? They are at the bar. Okay. I'm mentioning them because I'm right here in their church. For you to know that we are not just telling mere stories. The sister came from New York with a husband. They've been married for years without any child. And meanwhile, like I'm telling you that you can, you can, you can. Tell yourself I can. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Praise the Lord. That you can, whether you're a man or you're a woman. And then a sister, then the house caring fellowship, not in the church, home caring fellowship. They were there, and then this new sister from New York, people like New York, uh, made them to know, this is my situation. The sisters in the fellowship, I wasn't there, but God was there. I wasn't there, the word of God was there. I wasn't there, the power of God was there. And then the house fellowship group that said, let us pray. And the sister, they prayed together. That sister from Kerry fellowship, the sister of Shidi pray. They prayed that day, and God answered. And God blessed that family. It doesn't have to be this pastor or that pastor. It can be you. And it will be you. Oh, all right. Please come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Now, they are giving me a sign. This child that was born through that prayer, they are presenting. Come over, come over, come over, come over. Praise the Lord. Let them see you. Amen. Come over here. Let them see you so that they can see you. Look at the child now. Look at the child now. Look at the one that follow after that. Come over, come over, come over. And I'm telling you, we are not telling you fables. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at their children. Amen. They were already grown. But God said he was going to hold on this prayer. Thank you so much. You will live long. You will live long. You will live long. And you will live to God's glory. The miracle God did for you, you will, he will use it for other people. Put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you so much. You see what we are talking about? This is exactly how I challenge them that time. I encourage them that you can. Don't run there. Don't run there. Don't run there. You can do it. The vitality of the saints. And here on earth, God will use you. And then we prepare you for eternal glory in Jesus' name. Time is gone. We have to pray. Rise upon your feet. And you are going to tell the Lord, Lord, I will build destiny. I will not live in sin. I will not be a slave of sin. I will not be a slave of Satan. I will not be a serpent of sin in Jesus' name. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Uh, Pastor Rene, please come over and lead us in prayer. The Lord will use you. The Lord will use you. The Lord will keep you. God has spoken once, twice have I had it. The power belongs unto God.
the word of the Lord. There's a victory. The Lord gives victory. Commit yourself, my sister, my brother. The Lord is here. We have heard the word of God. And the Lord is instructing us that we can come out of our secret sin. We can come out of our secret sin. Commit yourself and open your mouth and say, Lord, deliver me from secret sin. Deliver me from the secret sin. And give me the victory, the victory that come from the heaven. The victory that empowers. The victory that empowers. Open your mouth and commit yourself to the hand of the Lord. Say, Lord, I surrender myself unto you. Lord, I sold myself unto you. Lord, I gave myself unto you. Give me victory. Victory over sin. Victory over Satan. Victory, victory every day. Victory every day. Commit yourself to the hand of the Lord. Whatever you are, you are here now, commit yourself. Say, Lord, I surrender myself unto you. Lord, I surrender myself unto you. Lord, I need your help. Lord, give me grace in the name of Jesus. I receive grace for heaven. I receive grace for heaven. And the Lord will empower you. The Lord will instruct you. The Lord will help you to come out of that beset sin. Every day you are trying inside of your heart. He said, Lord, I think when you cry to the Lord, the Lord will help you. That's why you have to surrender yourself to the hand of the Lord. And be honest with yourself. He said, Lord, Give me out of that. Lord, give me out of that trap. Lord, I need your help. Stretch your hand and give me grace. The grace for heaven. The grace in the morning. The grace in the office. The grace everywhere. The Lord is able to do it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy from this day. Give me a grace in the name of the Lord. Give me grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Give me grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you are youth, the Lord is, is able to deliver you. Whether you are old, the Lord is able to deliver you. Whether you are you, you are workers, yes, this is a time to come out and, and work for the Lord. Say, Lord, Lord, give me power. You are trolling before. For this time, the Lord will equip you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we need help, oh Lord. Lord, we need help from heaven in the name of the Holy Spirit. Empower us, Lord. Give me grace in the name of Jesus Christ. I surrender my life unto you. I surrender my, myself unto you. I surrender my ministry unto you. I surrender my, my, my race unto you. Lord, empower me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Say, for this moment, Lord, stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. And pull me out from that corner. Pull me out of that company. Pull me out from that door in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you have called me. Yeah, Lord, you have called me. The Lord is watching you right now. And the Lord is reading your mind. The Lord is reading your mind. He's the only one that can give you the power. Oh, Lord, we surrender ourselves unto you. Lord, we surrender ourselves unto you. Lord, come and rescue us. Lord, come and rescue us for this pollution that is running everywhere. Yes, Lord, we surrender our lives to you. Come in the message to heaven and say, Lord, deliver us. Deliver us of those powers. Deliver us of those powers. Lord, a new transformation life. Yes, a new life for heaven. Yes, Lord, I'm real. Come in yourself to the heaven, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, O oh Lord. The mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord. The Lord is listening to you, my brother and my sister. The Lord is be honest with the Lord. Be honest with the Lord. That Lord, I want to come after that pornography. Lord, I'm terrified. Lord, my life is, is dried up. And the Lord will come. It's a matter of time. Not by power, not by mouth, but the spirit of the Lord. Not by power, not by mind, but the spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be one of the Lord. The Lord delivers. Don't run to, to those prophets. Don't run here and there. Say, Lord, I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours. 
Lord, I'm yours. Father, I'll be yours day and night. Without you, Lord, I will completely perish. Without you, I will completely lost. Without you, yet the world will swallow me. But I know by your grace, Father, yes, I'm not going to die. But I will live to glorify you. I'm not going to die. Name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Father, thank you for the message like this. Many people are crawling. Many people are dying. We pray right now that, Lord, this day of resurrection, Lord, stretch your hands and resurrect someone. I say you, Lord, resurrect someone in the name of Jesus Christ. We will live to glorify you. Despite of the challenges, despite of the arrow of the enemy, we will live and glorify you. Seal this message in our hearts. Father, we bless you as we continue, continue with us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. I want everybody to say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I can feel the power and the presence of God here. Amen. You are in the right place. I just want to use this opportunity um, to just share just a very brief testimony about 